Okay, this is episode two of Visual Basic. This episode we're going over if statements and a select case statement. Uh, these are two forms of checking um, variables and stuff like that. So it just checks things. So again, we make a console application, and you can get rid of these empty, empty spaces. Blank spaces don't do anything. Um, so I'm going to make a variable, and then dim var one has integer is equal to three. Now what I'm going to do is make an if statement. So if var one is equal to three, then execute some code. Now I'm just going to put the console dot read line here just so it doesn't close itself. So um, in here I'm going to put console dot write line um, var one was equal to three. Um, so there we are, and this will say var one is equal to three. Now, if we set var one equal to four, it won't work. Now, um, if you want to display everything but this happening, then you can use an else statement. So if this fails and this ends up being false, it will then do everything here. So right here, console dot right line far one wasn't equal to three like that so then now it says var1 wasn't equal to three now you can use different conditional operators that's what this here is so we've checked shown the equals one you could say if var1 is greater than three so this should say um, that will do and then that so var1 is greater than 3 because 4 is greater than 3 if I set this to 3 it won't because var1 wasn't greater than 3 because it has to be greater rather than being the same uh, you can also do the less than like that same principle this is saying var1 is less than 3 then do it so again this won't work because it's not equal to 3 now if you want to say greater than or equal to that's how you put it you put greater than then the equal sign if you put it the wrong way around it will correct it for you if you do that then click away it will correct it for you same with the other way around if you want to do less than or equal to like that so either one of them will say 3 it will say the message um, but this message needs to change um, one other one is the not doesn't equal which is like that so var1 doesn't equal 3 so um, I'm just going to say true or false here just so I don't have to keep changing it um, so false if this is to 4 then that would return true so everything but 3 would return true if it is three it would return false um, so yeah um, basically these statements this whole thing here past the if and before the then is either going to return true or false now what you can do is put different things in between so if you can say if var1 is greater than three and var1 is less than 9 then say true else so this will work true if I put this to 11 it won't work because it's uh, greater than 9 if I put this to 2 it also won't work so it's checking between a range of 4 and 8 um, well more precise for checking range between 3.0 recurring 1 or 9 or 8.9 recurring if you want to be technical um, but yeah it's fine so you can either do you can change this for an or statement instead of an and um, now there are different uh, logical operators um, you can do 
but I'll go through the basic ones here. And an ore are pretty much the only ones you're going to probably use. Um, so, this. So, this has got to be true, or this has got to be true. So, actually, this will always end up being true. Um, you say if var1 is equal to 3 or var1 is equal to 9, then either one would work. Um, but it's 2, so that's not going to work. If you change that to and, then that would never work because it can't be 3 and 9. You can also put different things here. One thing you should know you can't put 3 or equal to 9, that doesn't work. Uh, you have to put var1 each time. Um, you can do XOR, NAND, I believe, NAND. Wait, maybe not. Okay, I got that. Not works, and then XOR works. So you can Google what they are if you really want. Not just means the, the reverse of it. Um, one other thing I've got to say here is you can also use an else if statement. So if you go down the line and put else if var1 is equal to 4, then. So. Um, this one should say 3 and then this one should say 4 so that's false if you make it 3 it will say 3 and if you say 4 it will say 4 um, one thing you should be aware of if the first one passes then the, the following ones can't ever be passed. Only one of the things in the if statement will be passed. So if you want to make two things be acceptable, you need to make separate statements. So you put one after another. You can actually put if statements inside each other. So instead of doing this, you can say if var1 is greater than 3, then, and then I'll get rid of this and say if var1 is equal to 3 then 4 then um, say 4 else not 4 so you can see this saying 4 if this is 5 or we'll say 7 then you can see it says not for. So this is example. This is called nested statement. Well, it's nested if statement. Um, so if anything, if a statement is inside another statement, then you call it a nested statement. Okay. Next, we're showing you select case statement. So you do this with select, then the word case, then you say var one because that's the variable that you're checking. So you use the word case. I like to think that as in case. So in case four one is equal to three, then you press enter and just say you code here three, and then you say case four blah blah blah. And then you also do a case else, which is everything. But so this is a nicer, quicker way of doing things. If you want to check, um, have the same outcome for multiple things, you don't use the or. You put a comma and say four. Five, six. So you do that kind of thing. If you want to check, uh, have the same outcome for multiple um, scenarios.